Hi friends, welcome back to Mule 4 series of learning videos. I am Shivartan Kamani, an Integration Technical Architect. In this video, we are going to do something interesting and uh, we are going to create a use case for uh, MuleSoft batch processing in Mule 4. And also we are going to do some interesting crash test on MuleSoft and uh, we are going to see how many records it can process in a minute. And I'm going to test uh, the batch processing with uh, 10 records thousand records, five thousand, ten thousand and I might go up to twenty thousand records. So my intention is to check if uh, the MuleSoft can process and insert uh, the incoming CSV record like uh, twenty thousand records per minute or not. So um, we can start this experiment and uh, let's start. Let's walk through the use case. So I have a specific use case of uh, taking the CSV records that has uh, order ID, product ID, quantity, price, etc. So um, this is almost close to real time uh, batch processing use case. So because even in the real time, we are going to get uh, uh, around 10, 20 fields uh, in the CSV file. And uh, maximum we are going to call the web service or we are going to call the database to insert those records. So since it's uh, since we are uh, going to uh, test with uh, thousands of records, I don't want to call web service uh, that's available in the internet and I don't want to break it. So uh, let's take the use case of uh, taking the records and then inserting the records into the database. So I would like to walk through the techniques that I have used here, uh, which you, can, you there are some uh, critical things that you need to observe here before we do the crash test. And uh, I have used uh, uh, file polling and instead of uh, directly reading from the file, I'm, I'm going to use file polling because I want to have some control over the file and uh, the file should not be deleted before uh, the records are completely read and processed. So uh, I've used the uh, polling based uh, file read. See here, this is a file read. And once uh, everything is processed uh, through this batch process and at last uh, I'm remo removing the file uh, to ensure that uh, the file doesn't get corrupted uh, or removed before they are processed completely. So that's the reason why we are using a uh, polling based uh, file read. So let's uh, take a look at the uh, file polling content. And in the file polling, we used uh, uh, frequency and start delay. So I have explained the importance of having the uh, frequency and start delay uh, due to some reasons. So please check out my previous video and then come back here. That will be helpful to you. And uh, so if you go to the configuration XML, you can see something important. Let's open the configuration file. So under the file, um, you can see here when we read it, uh, we added uh, uh, two important properties. That's uh, output encoding and output MIME type. Because uh, uh, when when the file is read from the file, it's uh, basically reading it as a stream. So we are going to instruct uh, uh, the file read component uh, uh, that the incoming data is a CSV and uh, there is a header file. So this is uh, critical to note and otherwise it's uh, very simple. So, um, so here in the file read, I'm sorry, let me open it here. So under the file read, uh, um, it's uh, simple. We are giving the file location and we have the file location created. And uh, the file name is given as in file.csv because there is a, a file name that's designated. And uh, so we need to ensure that the incoming file has this process or when you have some FTP processing, you need to read it, rename it, and then uh, move the file with the name in file.csv. So this is the file read. And once the file is read, uh, uh, we are going to transfer this uh, to JSON. So it's very simple and we are using the map to uh, convert the incoming CSV into JSON with the appropriate uh, headers. So uh, I'm taking the CSV file with uh, ID, order ID, product ID, quantity and price. So let me walk through the um, input file. So this is my input file. So I have uh, the headers ID, order ID, product ID, quantity and price. And uh, 
So as usual, uh, you we have the uh, batch processing. We have not done anything complicated because our uh, aim here is to uh, do the crash test and then check uh, how many records uh, MuleSoft can process in a minute. So um, there is no complex functionality other than uh, writing the record into the database. So I have my uh, database here and uh, let us check uh, So this is the metadata of the database table. So we have ID, which is uh, auto increment. We have order ID, product ID, quantity is integer. So I made it deliberately one of the fields as integer because uh, in the incoming file, while I'm forming uh, 5,000 records or 10,000 records, I'm going to have some of the quantity as uh, uh, alphabetical value to deliberately make it uh, incorrect to see if a MuleSoft uh, is able to withstand those errors and then handle it accordingly. And uh, so this is the uh, a structure of the database table we have created. And uh, in the mule flow, let me choose this. So in the mule flow, we have uh, inserted the incoming, uh, I mean inserted the fields uh, with the help of incoming record. So we are extracting order ID, product ID, quantity and price and we are not uh, uh, using the ID because ID is simply incremental. And uh, we have uh, defined based on this uh, uh, payload fields. This is a simple insert statement. And uh, we have uh, handled the error. So suppose in case if uh, there is an error encountered for that particular record being processed, uh, we are uh, uh, handling this uh, the payload content will be uh, written into the file with a specific file name. So as I indicated in the previous video while I writing the file, since we are going to process huge number of records uh, back to back uh, within a minute or even within a second, uh, there will be multiple records being processed. So I have introduced uh, the random number uh, so that uh, every time when the file is written, the file, is, uh, file name is becoming uh, unique. So uh, then finally, once the batch process is uh, completed, uh, we are logging that it's completed. And finally, we are removing the file. So we are using the file remove uh, uh, component. We can do it. Uh, so I have used file delete and uh, we are giving the same file name. Let me show it here. So in file.csv, which is used for reading the file that gets deleted. And uh, sometimes uh, when there is, there is no file, um, it will be uh, empty file that will be attempted and then it will be pulled. So uh, we are just avoiding uh, such error by just simply logging and uh, uh, I have given the on error continue with the type file illegal content. Suppose if, uh, if there is no file placed uh, uh, when, when it is polling and it will simply ignore and then it will just log. So that's it. So now uh, I can't wait uh, to test the uh, capability of MuleSoft, at least in my local machine. So I would like to uh, have MuleSoft uh, complete uh, 5000 record uh, in a minute, and then we will go uh, slowly increasing the number of records. So if this is uh, successfully done, say 5000 records in a minute, if it is deployed in Cloud Hub and we have more vCores and more workers, I'm sure uh, it's going to be even more efficient when it is deployed in Mule Cloud Hub. Let's, uh, let's get our experiment started. So the application is up and running and uh, I have the file location created with uh, 50, 100, 500, 5000, 10,000 and 20,000 records. And in the error, uh, there are some errors, we will delete it. And the error folder is empty and input folder is empty. So now we need to, uh, I, I want to show one more thing under the uh, input file. I have deliberately uh, placed uh, alphabet, alphabet uh, in terms of quantity for some of the records and uh, I guess those records must be uh, uh, isolated and moved to the error records folder. So I have done it deliberately. So let's rename this uh, into infile.csv and then we will try to place it in input. 
and uh, let's see how many rec and there are uh, some records that are already available let's delete it so delete and we have no records in the table we are ready to start so let's copy this and put it in input folder and see what happens so it just took uh, 10 seconds let's see the so let's count the records so there are 42 records and then let's go back and see uh, the input folder is empty the file got removed and let's go to the error and uh, in the error there are uh, eight records and here we have 42 so the number of records are matching so it's very important that the number of records are matching uh, because uh, none of our records must be lost uh, uh, without any trace because it should either be in the error table or it should be successfully inserted into the database table so now uh, we got it successful now we are ready to start with uh, 100 records i have renamed it as infile.csv Let's put it in the input folder. So now we are going to see uh, the time taken uh, for 100 records. It's removed. I guess it's uh, completed. Let's go back to the database table and then see the records. So I see some records inserted. We can see the timestamp of records. So it starts from 34 and uh, it ends at uh, 38. and uh, let's count the number of records so there are 84 records i think it's correct uh, so 84 records are inserted uh, within four seconds that's unbelievable so now there should be 16 records uh, that must be available in the errors folders because the, here it is 84 so let's go to errors folder i guess we have 16 records here so let's investigate what is there in the error record. So the error record contains JSON uh, which uh, with the quantity uh, being alphabetical. So it's working as expected. So let's delete it. And uh, let's delete the records from orders. Now I think uh, since it's uh, processing quite fast, I would like to go for uh, 10,000 records. So let me we delete this and deleted all the error records are deleted and uh, order table is empty now let's try with 10,000 records so I renamed it to n file let's put it in the input folder let's see what happens now So as a next step, I processed 20,000 records and uh, uh, here is the matrix. So 16,668 records got processed and uh, the minimum and maximum time is here. So it started at 55.27 and it ended at 58.26. It's almost uh, uh, just taken three minutes uh, to process the entire 20,000 records. Now let's check out the errors and uh, we see here uh, 3332 records and i think it's exactly matching with 20 k records uh, so uh, yeah this looks good uh, to me again as well it took uh, uh, close to 180 seconds so this exercise uh, uh, give us some clear indication of how uh, the application has to be designed so let's uh, discuss on the takeaways so first we need to have a clean design and uh, I think according to the batch processing guidelines given by MuleSoft uh, whenever you have a batch processing requirements it has to be deployed as a standalone API as a microservice. So um, since here you can see uh, the uh, polling happened without any issues uh, because that's because uh, we have not mixed up with any other functionality. So um, it's better to have a, a higher v core size because uh, when we have say 50,000 or 100,000 uh, 100, records uh, uh, coming in in a single attempt 
then it requires a lot of memory to process, keep those records in memory and process them one by one. So uh, ideally, we need to have 1.0 uh, worker size with uh, two workers minimum so that uh, uh, it has a, a concurrent uh, processing happening when these records come in. So there is other uh, design guidelines when you are processing uh, such huge count of records, say, let's say the 50,000 or 100K records coming in. So in that situation, it's not advisable to uh, process or insert into the database records directly, but rather you can have uh, some uh, uh, interim uh, flow that receives, breaks down these uh, 50,000 records into chunks and uh, stages into uh, uh, another folder with uh, 100 records each. So that uh, when you are staging, uh, there is no bulk processing happening, but uh, rather, uh, it goes in stages uh, so that uh, when there is an error happens, uh, you have a way to restore it uh, in a proper manner. So uh, you can do the staging by means of a database or by means of FTP. In case you are using Cloud Hub, there is no uh, file handling capability. So at that time you can use uh, uh, FTP or some other mechanism to process these records in stages. Uh, and in a controlled way. For example, if uh, 100,000 records come in, you can break down into thousands of records and process them uh, once in, uh, say, uh, 30 minutes or once in 10 minutes based on your infrastructure. Uh, that's because uh, uh, doing uh, or processing these records in stages uh, by splitting them into small batches of records uh, give us the resource utilization and infrastructure utilization efficiently and uh, you need to calculate it uh, uh, on, uh, you need to do some math on uh, how much records are uh, coming in at what time and then you can split uh, so that it's processing throughout the day or throughout the time span without violating the SLA. So I wanted to make this video for both uh, developers, testers and architects because uh, many times uh, we do some uh, small runs and dry runs with 100 or 200 records and assume that it's going to run properly. So in such situation when we move it to a production environment, uh, when there are unexpected records uh, come in, we get surprised and we get a lot of production issues. Uh, so imagine there are hundreds of order coming in and you're lost uh, without any trace. So in production it's very difficult to restore them or sometimes you might not be able to meet SLA and sometimes you lose the data uh, without being able to trace which will lead to a lot of chaos and confusions. So it's very important that to uh, uh, deploy this uh, into the staging environment and then do some testing like uh, uh, stress testing and volume testing to ensure how the system behaves for uh, uh, different records. Suppose if you have the production expectation like uh, uh, say uh, 10,000 records uh, in a day then you need to try until uh, starting from 10,000 records, you try 20,000, 30,000, 40,000 and then see where it breaks so that you can calculate the infrastructure requirements and then propose the management on buying those uh, levels of V course and infrastructure accordingly. So hope this uh, video uh, was helpful to you and uh, if you like it, uh, please hit the like button and uh, subscribe my channel so that I can come up with more useful topics in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye.